How's it going guys? I'm Hawk and I'm back with more recaps from E3. I just got done watching the Xbox press conference and the Ubisoft press conference and by God was it good. The Microsoft one was really, really good, really packed with some good stuff. Um, Ubisoft was, was good too. It was weird starting off, but we'll get into that as soon as I can get to my notes here. Okay, so it started out with Gears of War 4. They did some gameplay, the trailer, obviously. I think with a lot of these games, they did gameplay in trailers, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that for most of the games that came out today. The, the first thing they started out was, though, they went right into Xbox One Slim, uh, a lot of specs on it. Uh, it's 40% smaller, has an integrated power system. It looked really cool. Um, the controllers have a farther range than the standard Xbox ones do. And then after that one was Gears of War 4. It looked really good. And I'm not a big Gears of War fan, but I'm looking forward to this one because it's looking pretty good. After that, they went into Killer Instinct and they tied both Gears of War 4 and Killer Instinct together because General Ram is in gear is going to be in killer instinct as well uh that was followed up with forza horizon 3 um it looked really cool it looked it looked like a nice um it looked like it was done nice the the system they use or the engine they use was really cool um after that they went on to recore um then more information on that a trailer for it looked really cool uh, Final Fantasy 15, and they did the demo against Titan. Um, it looked vicious, and it looked cool, and it looked like it was another one of those really beautiful games. What do you expect from Final Fantasy? So Final Fantasy 15 on the Xbox One, the demo looked really cool. Titan was a motherfucker big. Um, then, yeah, those two looked good. Then they had another trailer for The Division, uh, more stuff on the division and whatnot. Um, they announced Tekken Seven, which looked really cool. I'm not probably not going to get it, but it does look really cool. Dead Rising Four was in fact confirmed, and Frank is back, and it does take place around Christmas. And I know this isn't really big news anymore because it was leaked like a couple of days beforehand, like yesterday. But it is here, and it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty funny. Uh, they got, they did give more scale bound, uh, scale bound looks really good, I'm looking forward to that one so much, it's like all my favorite things put into one, and it looks like it was done right, uh, hopefully it's done right anyway, uh, they had gameplay and they had trailer, I think they had trailer, I don't know, anyway, they had gameplay, it looked really cool, um, they did State of Decay right after it, State of Decay looked really cool, I, at first when it, they released it, I honestly thought that it was going to be a, a, a um, Left for Dead game because just just because of how it looked. It, but after figuring out it was State of Decay, that's fine. Um, it looked really cool. Halo Wars Two was officially announced. It looked all right, and then they released the biggest bit of news. I think Project Scorpio. Which is the a new freaking console. Um, it's got six teraflops of power. They pushed that, and that's all that we know that I know. But it is going to be for VR purposes too. But do not fear because the Scorpio, the Xbox One, and the Xbox One Slim are all intercompatible with each other, as well as all their their accessories will be compatible with each other. Games will be compatible with each other, so it's not a step to the future, even though it is. It's not really them moving on from the one. They're still going to focus on the one, but they're also giving out the Scorpio too, um, or Project Scorpio. It looks really cool. Um, so that was pretty much it for Microsoft. I really think that Sony needs to step up because Sony's got a lot to follow after that. Um, but they've also, Xbox did talk about some of their. Uh, more upgrades to Xbox Live. Um, they did say that their new Xbox Play thing is you can 
start a game on the Xbox One. Once you buy it on the Xbox One, you get it for free on the Windows 10. You can play it for free over there. You can, on in all your trophies, all of your save data, and all that other stuff transfers over to there as well. So you can play an Xbox Live on your console, save the game, move over to the computer, and you can play it over there as well. And there's some, all the games, most of the games that I've talked about or thus far are compatible with Xbox Play. And it, so far it's pretty cool. And then they also announced a tournament system for the Xbox Live that you can set up for your friends and you all, you guys can have a tournament with each other. That looks pretty cool. And there's more Xbox Live features I'm not getting to. There's so much to talk about. We'll have more in depth on the show this Friday. Um, they also, they did have a new feature where you can customize your own controller and have it shipped to you for a price. They didn't say a price, but they did say you can now customize your own controllers from this from the website. And it looked pr- that that's pretty cool to me. Moving on to Ubisoft because Ubisoft had a lot to follow. They started out with a weird old song and dance to um It was the song Don't Stop Me Now by Queen and it was to promote um just Dance 2007, which was weird. And then after they did that, they went right into the new Ghost Recon, which is Wildlands. I believe is what they named it. Uh, it's going to have four-player co-op, I'm guessing, online. I don't know about the couch co-op. Um, they didn't really specify that I heard. Um, it looked pretty cool. The gameplay for it was was awesome. And it's going to be an interesting play. I'm going to have to keep my eye on that one. After that, they did a new set. They introduced a new South Park game, The Fractured But Whole. Um, it, it's base, It's a play on the whole superhero movie boom going on um, with like the Marvel's Civil War that just that just happened. Um, it's following, kind of doing that whole thing. It takes place the day after the Stick of Truth. So it it's funny the trailer for it. Look it up um, if you're into South Park things. The trailer is the trailer is funny, and it looks like it's worth the time. Um, trying to move down my notes. Um, <laughs> part, sorry about that. Yeah. So when Ubisoft took the stage, though, they did more in their division. Um, they announced some expansions: the division survival. Um, they announced for the 30th anniversary, they've got three new outfits coming. They've got Rainbow Six, Splinter Cell, and an outfit from Wildlands. And they looked really cool, and I'm not sure how you get them. Well, you get them from being part of the uh, Ubisoft Play, or the Uplay, you can, whatever it's called now. You get it from there. And no word on if you can get it anywhere else. I don't wouldn't imagine you could. After that, they did a new VR game called Eagle Flight, it's like red versus blue, uh, red team versus blue team, and what they showed was it was two teams of three, and you're on eagles, and you've got to fly around in empty st- the deserted streets of Paris, and you got to get the eggs, or the rabbits, or whatever they are, from the near the Eiffel Tower and take them back to your nest, best two out of three wins, it looked really cool, the game design looked, looked, uh, looked really cool and how it played was cool and especially when you go first person view on the vr it was just beautiful um after that one was done they did star trek vr which is called star trek bridge crew and it was cool like you're on the crew you're on the bridge you're taking part in a battle and you're performing the tasks of whatever role you're playing like the engineer uh the person who flies the ship it really cool and immersive and you everybody's got their own part so it's no one's more important than the other everyone's got their own job to do and they they have to do it in order to win after that one they did stuff or they did a new trailer and gameplay for the game for honor which they teased last year i believe um no i they didn't say if it was going to be online only or not but it's there and it looks pretty cool after that was the Assassin's Creed movie. They did stuff on that and they talked about it with a new trailer for it too. Then after that, they went on to what everybody was kind of waiting for was Watch Dogs 2. It looks awesome. Like It looks like it's a, a big and good improvement from Watch Dogs 1. I'm looking forward to it. A lot of people were looking forward to it. 
it looks like it's been put together really, really, really well. And then there was the last game that they did was called Steep, and it's like extreme skiing from what I've been able to tell. You can play with friends online, all gathering on the slopes of the mountains, and you go down, you ski down the mountain. You can either ski, snowboard, uh, par- parachute, paraglide, whatever it's called. I'm not a big, I'm not big on these extreme sports and bodysuit. And you can go down the mountains and whatnot, and it'll track your move. It'll track the path you took. You can go back to certain points on the path, replay it. Redo it and view statistics on it, and you can share it amongst your friends and whatnot. And it was it looked really cool. I'm not so sure if I'm going to be into it, but it looks pretty cool. And so far, that's all that we've got. I'm waiting on Sony to come out. I know we'll have some more stuff on Square when they do theirs. If they haven't already done theirs, they probably are doing it right now. But I am taking a quick little break from it all. Um, but we are gonna. I'm gonna come back later after the Sony does the after Sony does theirs with more information on it. So far, guys, I will give Microsoft an A plus. I give Ubi a B because they got they had some good stuff, but they it was weird how they did it with the opening of it with the whole thing. And Aisha Taylor is just trying a little too hard. She was funny, but she's trying a little too hard. But I can't really blame her. So, so far for the week, it Bethesda has got an A, Microsoft's got an A+, Ubi's got like a B. Good product. They've got things that they brought, and they brought it well. And now we just see where it goes from here. Sony's got a lot to live up to, but I think there's some big things to come from Sony. Because if you think about it, they're showing their conference in theaters. So they've got to have something big coming. Hopefully they do, and they're not just you know blowing the steam, or they're not just saying, hey, we've... They're not trying too hard to get people to watch it when they don't have the substance. I don't know what to expect. I'm not even going to begin to say what I want to see because I'm going to go into it like a lot of other people are. I'm just going to... My expectations are low, and I want to be surprised. So that is coming up later. This has been E3 Recap for Microsoft and Ubi. Square will come later. Sony will come later, and Nintendo's tomorrow, and I don't know what all they're going to do, and I don't know who all else is tomorrow. Double Fine is wrapping up the night tonight. I don't know if I'm going to have anything on Double Fine, and someone on the schedule says to be announced for the beginning of this evening before Sony goes on. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know what's going on, but I will be sure to bring you guys the news for Sony and everything up to them at that point in time so until then guys i've been hawk you've been listening to recap on vhi gaming and anime see you guys later